Before we leave. Okay, friends, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming for uh, this uh, special press conference. Uh, we're honored to have you uh, here with us uh, here in Tel Aviv, in Menorah Miftahim Arena, uh, President and CEO of the EuroLeague Basketball, Mr. Jordi Bertomeo, for Maccabi Fox Tel Aviv's uh, first uh, home EuroLeague game for this season against the Unica Hamaraga from Spain. Uh, just a reminder, in a short while before the game uh, begins, we will be holding a special ceremony honoring uh, the memory of uh, Nate Huffman, one of the greatest players of Maccabi Tel Aviv and European basketball, who passed away last week at the age of only 40. Uh, we will now begin with the opening remarks of the chairman of Maccabi Tel Aviv Basketball Club, his 47th year with the club, Mr. Shimon Mizrahi. Please. Good evening, everyone. It's a big honor for us and pleasure to have the CEO of the EuroLeague, Mr. Jordi Bortomeo, and Ed Scott here as our guest. And I am sure that since the last year that Jordi and Ed were here, there are some things that you would like to know and Jordi would like to tell you. So please, you are invited to hear what Mr. Bortomeo is going to tell you. Good evening. Thank you, Shima. Uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to, to, keep the, to keep the tradition of coming to Tel Aviv to enjoy Maccabi hospitality, so thank you, Shimon, again. And, and to, have, to keep the tradition also to spend some time with you. Um, as always, there is no limit uh, on time. The only one is that we have a game. No limit on, uh, no, no restrictions on subjects that we want to talk. And to ask just a few remarks because we cannot deliver every year some many many new things but I think this year we have some of them and I think it's important to point out that for the first time ever in the European basketball history two two yearly clubs uh, went to a stage to play two game back to back games in in Chicago and New York and that was thanks to the initiative and the and the idea and the commitment of Maccabi Tel Aviv. So I think that it's, it's a very important fact that the first, for the first time in our history that has happened in, in, in New York and Chicago. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a very promising uh, first step in the direction of to promote and to expand the visibility and, and the awareness of, of the league and our, our teams in, in such a big market. That is the first thing. And the second one is, uh, it's also remarkable, the fact that this year is the first time, the first season in which the, the financial fair play regulations will be in place. So this will be the, after three years of, of transition, that's it's already in force. It's already a, a group of three people which will be in charge to monetize the accounts of the clubs. And, uh, and, we, and we believe that will be um, helpful in order to, to have our teams in a, in a more sustainable uh, situation from, from, the, from the financial point of view. So, so we cannot expect the first season to have everything solved, so that's for sure. But uh, I just want to tell we are in the right track in order to, to, to achieve this very important goal for us. We have our clubs sustainable from, from, the, from the financial point of view. Uh, the third one is that this season will will inaugurate a new uh, criteria to distribute the revenues of the Euroleague. I think that uh, the clubs did a great effort to understand that after 12 years it, it's time to change and to have a more fair system, which basically will allow us to reward more the good results uh, and the good performance of our teams on the court. So the current system will, will deliver also more revenues to our clubs because in addition of a new distribution, we have more revenues to distribute thanks to the, the growth of our business. So I think that that's another, another new, new aspect that if you want more details, of course, I am, I, I am, I am happy to, to, to give you more details according with the system if you are 
curious about the, uh, the details. And, and the last one, which is for as important, because in our, in our one of our main goals is how to reach more fans, and we have fans not only on the court and also on TV, but also right now, when the new technologies give us more opportunities, we just signed a new partnership with a company which is New Lions, uh, a leader company in the in the sector of streaming, and working with many professional leagues, like NBA, NFL, Premier League, and from now on with EuroLeague. And, and together with the New Lion, we will deliver our online streaming to mobile devices and connected devices worldwide. So we hope that all the Maccabi fans living far from Israel will have the opportunity to subscribe in the, the season, season pass to follow all the all the early games through this new system. So basically, those are the, the, the new uh, things that we are incorporating to the to the league this year, uh, as always trying to, to, to improve the quality of the competition. This year probably more focus on the economic side of the of the league, more than the competition, because the competition we cannot change the competition every season. So basically those are the things that I want to share with you, but I, I'm sure that you have many questions, not only with regarding these points, whatever you want, I am at your disposal. Hello, Jody. First of all, how are you? Good to have you here again. You. Roy from Sport5. wanted to ask you about uh, the structure of the league from next season. There's a lot of rumors. It's going to be a closed league, 16 teams league. Maybe you can elaborate and uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, what's going to happen and all about the struggles with FIBA. We heard also very much about it. Maybe you can share with us your information. Well, um, so it's true that... that um, since not since uh, last month, since June 2011, the club had uh, had a deep discussion about the future of the league. Since then, it was agreed that one of the main goals of the of the EU league has to be to become this this competition in the through league. Through league means to have a system in which all the teams can meet the rest of the team, the participating teams. Of course, so far with 24 clubs, with the problems with the calendar, that has been impossible. That has been the goal. And the, 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 the current system of the competition was a clear sign that we were moving to this direction. Because when we uh, changed the, the top system format with two groups of eight, it was clear that that was the path to follow for the next years. So the, this, this evolution uh, should come. I think sooner than later, but I just want to point out that that's come from 2011, not from two months ago. Um, and now we are discussing with the clubs how we can make this evolution happen. And round robin competition means that with 24 clubs will be almost impossible, otherwise we, we will damage the, the, the calendars of the domestic league, which is something that we want to, to, to protect. And, and we are now in, in, in discussions internally how to, how to, to figure out this, this uh, new structure. Uh, I don't know, pro probably beginning next season. But it's too early to, to, to talk about the details because we are just trying to, 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 to define the, the, the basic elements because moving from 24 to 16 is not an easy thing to do. So need to be discussed with all the stakeholders, with all the people involved. And then uh, when we have all the opinions on board, the clubs will meet and they will decide because at the end, the, those are the ones in our system who take the decision, not third parties. And of course, it's true that, that we cannot deny that Ruber, the, the FIBA has been very active in the last month sending messages uh, around that they want to take over the competition. I, I think that everybody knows that, that this, uh, this comes from our discrepancy about the calendar regarding the calendar and they, they approved to, to introduce windows during the club's competition period. So probably they believe that taking over the competition, they will solve the, the, the calendar issue. But uh, the only thing I can say that the clubs were very clear, very, very straightforward. And in, on July, they, they, they sent a clear message that they have been working hard in the last 15 years to build the EuroLeague. And now it's no point that, that they're to give up and to go back to what, ha what was the system 15 or 20 years ago. So this is where we are. I'm optimistic that uh, with FIBA will be still room to, that, to, to find solutions regarding calendars and all these things, which are the, really the, 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 the topics that, 
they, they are concerned, or they are the, the, the original concern was regarding this point. I am optimistic that with two years or one year and a half ahead, we still have time to, to, to find solutions. But uh, I think in the next month, we, we, we will have the opportunity to see if there is a real room to, for this, for this uh, agreement. Sorry Jody. for being too late. <laughs> Jody, good evening. Uh, I want to ask about the financial uh, fair play. I don't understand if it's uh, uh, from this season or from next season. No. So what we did is for three years we have been working with the clubs in order to have, uh, let's say, what we can call an homogeneous picture of the accounts of the club because we have 12 countries involved with 12 different regulations and with di different systems of, 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 of working for, from the clubs. So now, after these three years, we have, a, a, let's say, a more... We are in the third year now? Sorry? We no, we already finished the third, and then we, we the, 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 the fair play, the financial fair play regulation has been, will be applied begin for, from this season, from 2015-16 season, which means that at the end of the season, we will review the count of the clubs, and we will check if they full fill the rules that has been approved by the and club years ago. And then if not, depends on which kind of fulfillment. So if there are some, some of them which are, are, can be solved, most of them can be solved because financial fair play regulations, it's about basically not to spend more than you, what, you, what you, you earn. So it depends on the, 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 the amount or the dimension of the, of the losses. You have to, 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 to establish some recovering plan, Another, another question is how much we can allow the, the, the shareholders to be involved in the budget of the clubs because it's one of the main concerns we have. We want to, to, to reduce the impact of the, of the shareholders in the, in, the, in the current budget of the clubs because we need to promote the real business, not someone who is, is, is subsidizing the, the clubs with no, with no return. So there are also other rules like a minimum budget to be sure that the team is competitive, and also there are some criteria regarding in which concept has to be allocated the, the concept of budget. For example, we have a criteria that the player size cannot be up to 65% of, of the total budget. Those are the criteria, and so those are the aspects that we are going to review. It depends on which one, and we'll have the, their own solution. Buenas noches, uh, Jordi. Huh? Uh, noches. Why, the Euro League, why did the Euroleague uh, gave the Turkey four places in this season and prefer teams like Alba Berlin that host the Final Four? We, don't, we, we didn't remember that Turkey's success in the last 15 years in the Euroleague, only Fenerbahce this last season gave the Final Four only. Well, um, I think that we cannot deny the fact that um, Turkey is one of the countries, one of the few countries with basketball is growing in a more, in, in a more uh, obvious way. So we have teams more and more competitive. We have teams with a bigger budgets. We have uh, solid projects, but now we have young but very promising projects in Turkey. Uh, it's a huge market in terms of population. It's one of, if not the, the biggest TV contract we have in Euroleague. So there are reasons for us to protect the, the, the Turkish market as we protect the German market and we protect the French market because for us are strategic. So you cannot forget that back to Germany, uh, many years ago we had only one team from Germany and, and very poor results in, in, at the European level, but we have been investing in, in, in Germany, working with the league, and now we have two teams in Germany and both are competitive. This year, Alba Berlin is not in the Euroleague, but has been invited in the last years. This year, we, we, we give the, the, the wheel card to Bayern Munich. So I think it's, it's um, at certain point, when we allocate the spots for the national leagues, so it's about what is it's more convenient for, for the system, not looking to the, the next season, looking at the middle and long term. And that's why it was the reason why we allocate this four team to to the fourth team because we have the two A license plus the champion of the Turkish league. But it's true that that uh, we said that it's last time that the Turkish champion will be in the league if they don't create a professional league, because Turkey is the only country in the league that they don't have a professional league. The, 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 the professional competition is run by the federation. 
So we send this, this message because as according with the EULIC regulations, we have to have a professional league in each country. As an exception, this year we, we, we accept for one more year Turkey, but not for a longer. Good evening, Mr. Bertomeu. Uh, there's no doubt about the Karsiakas uh, place in the EuroLeague because they are the champions. But you know, for us Israelis, uh, the Israeli champions of Paul Jerusalem were left out. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the official uh, explanation was that they are not competitive enough in the European uh, level, uh, in the Euro Cup. Uh, but Darushafa Cup didn't even play in the Euro Cup and they didn't even reach uh, the semi finals in the Turkish playoffs. So why were they preferred over Jerusalem? Well, it's not a, it's not a matter to compare Hapol Jerusalem with Darushafa That never was the discussion in the, in the board. The discussion is if we want to, to focus in, in the market that for us is strategic or not. So with all the respect with Hapol Jerusalem, it was not the only reason. So the reason is a combination of different arguments. And it's true that, that Hapoel now is it's trying to develop the very interesting project. But uh, we have to, to establish the, the rules in, in, the, in, the, in the right sense. So to be in the EuroLeague and then to invest is not the right, the right uh, way to do things. So first of all, you, prove, you have to prove that you are competitive and then you will have the opportunity. Hapoel Jerusalem, now they have a, a very nice and big arena, but last year was the first time that they were, were, they were Israeli champions. So we are talking about this situation. And they not even go through the second phase of the Euro Cup. We're talking about this situation. So when we compare, if we will have here the runner up of the Euro Cup or what you say, the Turkish team, and then we have more elements to evaluate. But first of all, it's a combination of arguments that also have to take into account that and the, which markets are interested for us for the, the dimension of the market. And then if the option, it's, it's a team in which the market is not so, is not so big. And from the other side, the, the level of the competition so far has been to, 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 to win one Israeli champion with all the respect for this, which of course deserve respect. Probably you can, you can have the explanation. I want to tell you, to, to, to tell you that was not an easy solution was probably one of the most, uh, let's say, was the debate in, in the, inside the board was, was, very, was very tough uh, and it was not a consensus. So it was not, uh, I, I, I am luck, lucky to, to handle the situation always by consensus, but that was not the case. That was not a position. Jody, you were talking about the fact that the Israeli market is not so big. Do you think it's big enough for two EuroLeague teams? This is one question. And the other, as I heard you met with the, our league commissioner, Mr. Shmuel Frenkel. Maybe you can talk about this meeting a little bit. Um, so we cannot take only one side of my answer. I am trying to say that when we are taking decisions, we are trying to uh, in, evaluate different aspects. So it's not about the dimension of the league. I said it's a combination of situations. So when I mentioned Turkey, it's obvious that it's a big market, much bigger than others in Europe. And then we have at this moment, from, from the economy point of view, the biggest TV contract, the biggest, uh, the, one of the biggest audience on court. So we have very good signs from Turkey, and we have to pay attention to this. Um, we have other countries in which we, we don't have the, the situation. We have Italy, which is a very huge market, but probably the, competition, the, the level of the teams are not good enough to have more than two teams. So I understand that no, no matter which explanation I am going to give you, you, you are not going to, 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 to agree with me because you cannot agree with me. I understand this point. I am trying to make an effort that how, how we take this decision. So uh, we had the meeting with the president of the league, which is always uh, something that we like to, to, to see the, 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 uh, how the league goes. We can explain to them our, our concerns, our ideas for the future. And of course, one of the points that you raised in this press conference has been, has been at least discussed. And we want to know what's their point of view. And we can share with them our point of view and, and trying to see how we can keep working together. OK. Uh, yeah, last question, because we're running late. You said that your goal uh, uh, is to, to go to 16 teams uh, in the bottom line. It could be in, uh, next year or next few years. Is it, it it's mean that uh, this league is going to be almost closed for no. any team? No. F first of all, I say that the goal is to have a round-robin competition. This is the goal. If that, 
uh, then the the, okay, run robin competition it's a league. So the name of Euroleague means that we want from the very beginning two thousand to create the European League. To have a league you have to have the teams playing against the rest of the team that are part in the competition. That's the run robin competition. So all the clubs has to meet the others. Then the second discussion is how with how many teams you can do so. With 24, it's impossible because we are talking about more than 50 games on the on the regular season. You know how many? 46 or 44 or something like this. So it's impossible. So then it's a, the, the next discussion is if you want to, full, to to achieve the goal, which is the right dimension. Then calendar, it's an issue, but also how many markets uh, you, you can have involved in the project is another, it's another aspect that you have to take into consideration. So there are different elements, elements again, to, to take into account when you are discussing about this. But never has been in the, in the EuroLeague uh, philosophy to talk about close league. We never talk about close league. We talk about the stability. And some of the clubs in the league has a stability. And they have been enjoying the stability because they deserve it, because they are the main contributors to the success of the league. In addition of these teams, we have open doors for other realities, other leagues, other countries that they deserve or they want to have the opportunity to, to compete at this level. So no matter which is the system in the future, never will be a closed league from the concept that we say the, cl the classical closed league as we know in the States and all these countries. It's not on the table, this kind of project. Okay, Jordi, once again, thank you very much for coming uh, to Tel Aviv. I hope we all are going to enjoy a great evening.